everyone, in today's video we are doing a photo shoot at the beach and I loved using it so much the first time that I had to hire it again. I have the Canon EOS R which we'll be doing the photo shoot on today and I also have the RF 24-70 f2.8. Today's model is Chanel. Lydia's done her makeup and Dan is behind the camera filming. The colors of the video might look a little bit yellow because there are some crazy bushfires going on in New South Wales at the moment, which is like causing the sun to just completely shift colors of everything. So we're gonna try and color balance that and the photos as much as possible. But anyway, we're gonna get started now. So I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Yeah, the lighting is super orange today. Yeah. It doesn't help that I made like an orange orange <laughs> And we've got like a red wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I kind of like really um, like soft movement. Okay. And if you want to move around like as much as you like okay. as and, well. Like, where are you shooting like? I'm going to start like maybe a mid-length shot. Okay. Yeah, that looks really good there. You wanna see just what we're working. The red looks so different actually. I'm it actually it's so vibrant. Yeah. <laughs> it looks really nice. For today's photo shoot, I had picked the location, a surf lifesaving club that I've shot around plenty of times before and the building had a few different colored walls such as this red wall, a nice orange color, yellow, pink and blue so it had heaps of variety. When we got to the location, this time it looks like they've done a little paintwork and renovation and the entire thing was red. <laughs> so unfortunately we only ended up with this one wall to photograph again since they all looked exactly the same. Sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches <laughs> when you do a photo shoot. Luckily I had picked a white outfit to shoot with these colored walls so it still matched with the red and I ended up with some pretty interesting photos. Usually I go for a more muted color palette with my photography, you know, like greens or dried up fields, which are a little bit like brown um, and things like that. So it was fun getting to try something new and having some photos that were a lot more vibrant like this in my portfolio. Do you want to try one? Maybe if you lean your shoulder against the wall, I can kind of shoot this way. <laughs> I edited all these photos with my Florence Lightroom preset pack which in the past I usually use on my travel photography but I do find that it suits portraits as well. I'm not gonna lie it was actually a little bit challenging for me to get the skin tones looking right for this photo shoot due to the bushfire smoke. I thought it would be as simple as turning down the white balance, but even when I did that, there was still a yellowish tinge left on Chanel's skin that I had to work with in the edit. Oh, that looks cool like that. So I'm gonna start by taking some photos on the widest end at 24 mils with a wide open aperture at 2.8. It's not so bad in these first few photos when you see the before and afters, but I'll show you towards the end how yellow they looked straight out of the camera. I actually recorded a speed editing tutorial of this entire photo shoot from the culling process right down to the publishing of these photos to my blog so I will be uploading that really soon so I can go into a little bit more detail and depth with my process on how I edited these. I really like yeah, like the chilled out kind of posing, okay. looks really nice. Do you want to try one um, leaning against the wall? Okay, I'm gonna switch it up to 35 mils now. Get a few portraits like that. Shooting these sitting down portraits at 35 millimeters, I didn't end up editing any of these shots because I felt like the earlier photos we got standing up at 35 and 50 millimeters looked a lot stronger. So I didn't want to edit photos that I didn't really feel anything towards. So here are just some unedited ones of the pictures we took here so you guys can see what we did. Did you want to, if you lean like on the floor with your hand and kind of lean your head into it? Something I noticed is that the RF 24-70 has really strong vignetting. I don't remember if the EF 24-70 having a vignette that's so dark. 
I'll leave that behind the scenes video down in the description if you guys want to watch that one. Luckily, getting rid of that is pretty easy in Lightroom. I just select lens calibration and Lightroom automatically selects the camera body and lens that was used and gets rid of any distortion and vignetting. So it's not something that I see as a big issue personally. The vignetting for this photo shoot was also a lot more obvious because we had a solid colored wall that we were shooting against and then later on we also went down to shoot at the beach so it was basically just a blue sky and a blue blue water in the background so you can really see the vignetting compared to if I was shooting like on the streets or in a park with like lots of trees in the background. Yeah, I think just here is good. So I'm gonna shoot like maybe just above your knees. Yeah. That looks really nice walking around. Perfect, and I'm gonna get in a bit closer as well. Um, maybe around like your stomach. So now that we're down at the beach taking photos, we've seen enough photos in this video for you guys to see how beautifully sharp this body and lens combination is. Like damn, I was really impressed zooming into the raw files, how much detail you can see in everything in the photo. I would say this is almost on par with the RF 28-70 f2 that I used in the past. I think that lens was slightly sharper than this 24-70. to I think if you wanted to maybe do something with your hands kind of like up towards your face. Oh, water's coming. <laughs> Okay, that looks really nice. It's got like a really moody feel with like the weather and everything. <laughs> it looks really cool. Unlike the EF version of this lens, I didn't notice the lens struggling to focus at any point. Usually wide open at 24 millimeters, focus tends to be more inaccurate, but I didn't see that at all while culling my images. Maybe if you just keep your hand on it, yeah. Do you want to maybe sit on the sand? I found this hat that I thought would be such a nice accessory, especially for an extreme close-up portrait. I thought the pattern of the hat, like the material that it's made out of, would create some really nice textures in a photo and possibly also some nice bokeh as well. <laughs> yeah, it's like pushing the front bit up. Because it was pretty windy at the beach though, it was acting a bit like a parachute, so Chanel did a really good job acting calm and collected, while also trying to hold the hat down and stop it from blowing away. <laughs> I got that photo too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like right in that. <laughs> and here I've got an example of what the photo looked like straight out of the camera. By this time in the afternoon, the light was incredibly yellow. So all the before photos that you see, I've tweaked the white balance so they don't look this crazy. I'm gonna get some like headshot close-ups. For this photo shoot, I wanted to keep the posing quite relaxed and minimal. I mostly wanted to focus on capturing some stunning close-ups, which we got a few on this day that I was really happy with. I'll share my favorite bunch of photos from this shoot right at the end of the video if you guys wanted to see which ones I liked the most. Also, unlike my behind the scenes when I was using the Sigma 50 to 100 millimeter lens, I think I managed to take a bunch of photos at each of the main focal lengths and in between as well. In that Sigma video, I only took one photo at 100 millimeters, which is so weird. Like, how did I not just take more? <laughs> so I definitely made sure I did that this time. Oh, I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then maybe I'll get like a full body shot here okay. as well. So I'm currently taking some full body portraits and headshot close-ups at around 60 mils and 70 millimeters too. It's a bit dark. It is a little bit dark.
I was wondering, would you mind laying on your stomach in the sand? Okay. I'll um, grab the hat off you so you don't have to <laughs> stress about it. You're really smart, like not plonking your hands on the sand, actually. Yeah, <laughs> the way you did that, I was like, that is I technique. Just thinking, like, I, I stopped getting under my nails. Oh, me so too. Like, it's gonna feel weird, so I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Now that we've also seen more photos taken at different focal lengths, I found that anything taken between 24 and 50 millimeters roughly had pretty significant vignetting. Then anything from around 50 to 70 millimeters didn't have very noticeable vignetting and I didn't need to fix that up with lens correction in Lightroom. I actually really liked it with your hands up towards your face. Got like a nice shape. These new RF lenses paired with the EOS R and its eye focus leads to some pretty amazing looking photos with honestly minimal effort. While I was culling, there were barely any photos out of focus and the raw files are super easy to work with. So yeah, if you're willing to spend the money, this lens is really beautiful and it looks like Canon are sticking to their high quality consistency with each new RF lens they release, as I felt the same way with the RF 28-70 f2 when I had the chance to use that at a portrait photo shoot as well. So we just wrapped up a photo shoot with the EOS R and the RF 24-70 2.8. I had so much fun shooting on this lens and from what I can see in the back of the camera, the photos look really beautiful and really sharp. Uh, a little bit yellow, so we're gonna see what we can do with that um, in post. But I would love to know what you guys thought of all the photos and of this lens down in the comments below. And also, if you haven't watched it yet, I'll leave my other EOS R behind the scenes video linked down below where we use the 28-70. <laughs> where we use the 28 to 70 f2 lens which is another absolutely ridiculous tack sharp zoom lens it's so impressive so i'll leave that link down below if you guys want to watch but as always thank you so much for watching i make new videos every single week so i will see you guys all next time bye